Hey everybody, it's President Jim again. As you can see, I'm standing on our beautiful campus and recording this, the last chapel devotional of the spring 2020 semester. It uh, really is something where I'm here on an empty campus missing you and Wendy's missing you as well and just being able to be part of your lives. And I know that uh, our faculty and our staff have uh, done their best to serve you this semester and to get you finished and to our graduates, we just want to say congratulations and we're looking forward to perhaps seeing you on campus in the fall and the rest of you uh, we're planning to be reopened in the fall and ready to be able to offer the the fall slate of classes in in on ground and in person and uh, just wanted to share a few thoughts with you today about uh, some things that i've been thinking about you know last night um, there was quite a storm that came through bartlesville and uh, just south of here there were some uh, turbulence in the clouds and all kinds of uh, swirling activity in the, in the sky and people wondering about tornadoes. And uh, I think within about probably 10 or 15 minutes at our house, we got about an inch and a half of rain and uh, it was just coming down in sheets and there was some hail and all kinds of things. And I was reminded about a scripture that actually is very relevant to not only the storms that we go through physically in this life, but also uh, the storms that were encountered in the New Testament. Probably one of the most famous places uh, where there was a storm was on the Sea of Galilee in Mark chapter 8. And you'll find there that Jesus has been teaching all day. And what he's teaching about is uh, uh, things that relate actually to his kingdom. Uh, the, the seed, the parable of the seed, the parable of the lamp on a stand, and all kinds of things, the growing seed. You can read that all in the first part of chapter 8. And then he gets down toward the last of the chapter and he invites the disciples to get into the boat, which was common, and there were other boats with them and they were gonna go across uh, the, the shorter side of the Sea of Galilee. And they're, they're going to a place where ministry is really going to ramp up quite a bit, but there's this storm that comes up. And we find there that the disciples are scared. And you look at culture today, you look at society in the middle of the pandemic and uh, people wondering, should we reopen society? And others saying, no, it's too quick. And maybe we ought to wait for a while. All of these kinds of questions and opinions are coming out. And, and uh, are we gonna jeopardize things? And are we gonna see more people die? And all kinds of things that uh, people have opinions about. And we're trying to make the right decisions. All of us will be. And, and definitely anxious to get back at it and to be able to, to not have to shelter in place for sure. I'm sure you're like that as well. But here you find in this biblical account, the disciples who are worried about a storm. I, I find it kind of odd that fishermen who make their living on this sea, who would know these kinds of storms, who would know these kinds of squalls, even though you're looking at a lake that's, uh, or a pond here today that's pretty calm, they, they find themselves in a place where they thought they were gonna die. And it could be relevant to you today. I don't, I don't know how you feel about this spring and where you're at, but some people have actually faced death. Others have feared it and others have felt like their circumstance was making them feel like they were in jeopardy of losing something, maybe even losing their mind. But regardless, they, they have all of these thoughts and all of these feelings going on. And, and they literally ask the question of Jesus, don't you care if we drown? Don't you care if we drown? Now, there's a lot going on in this story. There's a storm. Fishermen are scared to die. They, they know that Jesus is on the boat with them. And uh, the Bible says that he's actually asleep uh, in the worst part of the boat, the stern of the boat. And he's, he's got his head on a cushion. So here you have the master of the universe who's completely calm and resting. And the disciples who are professional fishermen are going crazy up on top of the boat. And and uh, they finally wake him up and, and then they ask him this question, don't you care if we die? Don't, don't you care, God, what I'm going through today? Don't you care about the, the future? Don't you care about what this uh, pandemic has done to me? Don't, in their case, don't you care that this boat could go down and everything that your kingdom represents right now, those who have chosen to really follow you, your disciples, that, that we're gonna go to the bottom of this lake and nobody's ever gonna find us. No sonar equipment's gonna be able to get us out of here and, and even find our remains. It's just gonna be worthless and hopeless and, and, and you don't care, you just wanna sleep through this. And what Jesus does is 
pretty remarkable, and I, I want you to hear these words today. He, he, he goes over to the edge of the boat, in my mind, and he does say these two words, quiet, be still. Quiet, be still. And sometimes, you know, we just need to be quiet before the Lord and quiet ourselves before him and, and ask him to reveal his plan to us. So if that's you today, maybe, maybe you just need to quiet, quiet your mind, quiet whatever those doubts are, quiet the thoughts that are distracting you and, and really pray to God and, and, and believe in God that he has things under his control, even though it feels pretty chaotic. And the other thing he says is to be still, that we would just rest, that we would uh, wait until he reveals what it is that we're supposed to do and how it is that everything's supposed to respond. And the scriptures tell us that as soon as he says that, quiet, be still, that the winds died down and the waves became completely calm. The storm had ended. I'm looking forward to the day where all storms end. And really, it was a relief last night as uh, we were watching the radar and, and realized that the storm has passed by and there weren't tornadoes in our area. That, that was a big relief. But I, I'm looking forward to the day where all storms end, all troubles end. But in the meantime, Jesus is standing on the top of our lives, on the top of our deck, on the top of our boat, and he's saying, quiet, be still. Now, there's other things that we could point out in this passage. One of them is that there are some things going on where Jesus is talking about eternal things, and and we're really focused, like the disciples, on temporary things. So Jesus is literally going through all of this teaching that talks about his kingdom to come, and and we might be too focused on temporary things like, like our kingdom and what we care about instead of what God cares about. But I think there's something even deeper than that. And that is when Jesus looks at the disciples and after he's calmed the storm, they've, they've awakened him from a slumber. They have uh, asked him if, they, if he cares if they drown and, and he's calmed the storm. And then he looks at them and he simply asks them the question and that is, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And in life, perhaps you could look at it as two sides of a coin. And they both kind of go together. And that is the coin of faith. And then the opposite side of that is the coin of fear. And it really is something that we can choose. It, it's not easy. Believe me, there's times when I've been scared to death. There's times right now that, that I'm scared of what's going on with this pandemic and all of the effects that it has on culture and the effects that it has on our university. And even though we're in good shape and even though we, we have full intentions of opening on ground and normal operations in the fall and we're gearing up for that this summer and we're sanitizing everything, there's still some elements of life that that I think about and wonder about. And, and so fear can kind of grip me and, and own me, if you will, for a while. And then I'm reminded that I need to have more faith, that I need to trust in God more, that, that I need to calm down and ask him to grow me up. I, I need to be quiet and be still and ask God to come into my life and come into my situation and come into my circumstance. And, and, and calm all of that down and, and help me to realize that he is the sovereign God of the universe and I'm not. And so I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what you're going through, but I just wanna leave you with these words. And that is, first of all, just be quiet and be still and know that God cares about you. And whatever the storm is, whatever it's been over the last couple of months as we've uh, gone through this pandemic and we'll continue to, to make adjustments to life and, 
and uh, we look forward to the summer and the fall and seeing you again and whether that's at commencement or perhaps even in class in the fall or some other time we we just also need to know that God uses these storms these times to get us ready for something else and you'll find in that passage that Jesus calmed that storm as they crossed the sea and then they got across the sea and they entered into what was called the region of the Gennesaret, that that is the region where the outcasts were put. That's the region where uh, the, the demonic were put. And, and there was a man uh, named Legion that came up and, and literally threw himself at Jesus and asked Jesus, what do you, what do you want to do with me, uh, son of man and son of God? And, and, and Jesus cast the demons out of him. They cast the demons out of them into a herd of pigs. The pigs ran off a cliff and the people who owned the pigs were more, more upset about the fact that the price of bacon was going to go up tomorrow at Walmart or wherever you shop. And, and, um, and, and this man had been delivered that was causing havoc on all of their society. They, they were more upset about their temporary loss than the eternal gain of Jesus delivering someone. And I think we find ourselves in similar situations. We're more upset about maybe what we've lost in this time frame than the things that we can depend on Jesus and ask him to help us grow through this time frame. So, so those words again are quiet, be still. Be still and know that God is still God and that he is still sovereign. He can calm winds and waves and he can calm any storm that you're going through as well. Maybe it's time to ask God to calm you down and to grow you up. Just understand that I love you and that God loves you and we're look forward to seeing you soon. Hope you have a great summer and uh, let us know how we can serve you and pray for you and help you. It's a beautiful, beautiful day at Oklahoma Wesleyan University and I want you to be able to experience that with me again very, very soon. Quiet, be still and know that God is still God.